All show long, we've been talking about the high incidence of mental health issues among Caribbean nationals in the United Kingdom. We ask the question, is the best remedy for those Caribbean nationals coming back to the Caribbean? Joining us now to discuss, Dr. Frederick Hickling. He is Professor Emeritus of Psychology, or Psychiatry, I should say, at the University of the West Indies. Welcome. Hi there. You've studied this issue of mental health, both here in the Caribbean and in the United Kingdom. In fact, you were invited to be a consultant psychiatrist in the United Kingdom to study Caribbean nationals there. To study and to work with them. And part of your research, I found this interesting, less than three per thousand people in the Caribbean suffer from schizophrenia, for instance, right. versus 60 per 1,000 people in the United Kingdom. Right. What's the takeaway here? Why does that happen? There is a huge problem in the British society in relation to black people. It's called racism. Mm -hmm. What happens to young black men in, in the United Kingdom? I guess it's the same thing happens in America, where they're under this huge racial pressure, the profiling that we're talking about, and they usually end up in, with some kind of psychotic disorder. All right, and what about this idea that mental health practitioners, let's say, in the United Kingdom are also dealing with their own sense of cultural bias? And as you point out, maybe mis misdiagnosing, when you were over in Birmingham, for instance, did you notice that the practitioners there weren't necessarily properly either trained to deal with Caribbean nationals in the United Kingdom, or were they just anxious to just slap the wrong diagnosis on a black person, for it, instance. It's, it's a complicated issue. I'm not saying that the psychiatrists there are not properly trained or, or don't understand the issue of, of cultural competence, but there are many who don't. So there are many situations in which I found that the, the psychiatrist just didn't understand what the, the person was saying. I remember I, I was seeing a patient in one of the big mental hospitals there and he was cussing off the psychiatrist for being a racist, mm -hmm. yeah? And so I, so I said to him, hey, cool down and tell me why you're calling this brother a racist. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, the, the, National, the National Health Service give me a set of false teeth mm -hmm. and the teeth don't fit. <laughs> and he, the, That was he, his sense of racism. No, 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 no. He was trying to tell the psychiatrist and the nurses, listen, I want to know to give me a new set of teeth because the teeth them don't fit. Uh -huh. And of course, it's the English psychiatrist didn't understand what he was saying. Okay. And the more he said it, is the more aggressive he became until they had to flatten him and give him medicines. So when all he wanted was a new set of teeth. And, and when I got there and I said, listen, calm down, cool down. Man, you know, fight over nothing. Yeah. Tell me what it is you want. He said, mm -hmm. I want a new set of teeth, sir. <laughs> and did he get the teeth? He got the new set of teeth and <laughs> never had any further problem with him. No problems with him. But that's a very serious language issue. It's a, you know, so in other words, you don't understand what the other person is saying. And there are many cultural nuances. And I've, I've written extensively on this issue, mm -hmm. you know, how, of the different forms of ways in which people can, can be misdiagnosed and misunderstood. Understood and misinterpreted by the diagnosing officials. How many people, when you do the numbers, you see these Caribbean nationals from the United Kingdom coming back, let us say, to Jamaica, what percent of them would you say make a full recovery and what percent of them can kind of languish in the system here as well? I would say about a third of those, when they come home, they stop taking their medication and mm -hmm. they get better, okay. simply because they were misdiagnosed in England and they didn't have to be taking all of those heavy med medicines. And the cultural pressures. And the cultural pressures. And then another third who are actually sick, actually sick, requiring medication, but not the, the doses of medication that they were on. So when they see a psychiatrist here and the psychiatrist says, well, listen, let's cut this medication down and let's start um, sending you for a sea bath and doing the things that we do in Jamaica on a regular basis, these people, get better. They still have to remain on the medication, yeah, but it's a lower dose and they start, usually start at working again. Mm -hmm. Then there is the last third now. These people do really have serious psychiatric conditions, but when they get here, they get into <clears throat> a regular program where we have, or they go to the clinic once a month or once every two or three months. They get the medications, whether it's by tablet or injection, and they do very well and they fit back into the culture. Thank you so much, Dr. Hickling, for coming in. That's Dr. Frederick Hickling, 
University of the West Indies Professor Emeritus of Psychiatry, and he joined us to talk about the issue of Caribbean nationals in the UK suffering from mental health issues. Set furniture for the preceding segment provided by Furniture Land and Carmen's Collection. To many people, the Caribbean is paradise. For the 40 million of us who live here, the Caribbean is our home. Our way of life, our economy, our society and our tourism industry depend heavily on our marine environment. Since 1975, the Nature Conservancy has worked with partners in the Caribbean to protect the land and sea for the benefit of people and paradise. Join us at nature.org slash Caribbean. This week on 18 Degrees North. These are their faces. Women recently killed by a husband or boyfriend in the Dominican Republic. I said, oh my God, my hand. When he saw it fall and all the blood, he stopped and he left me there. There's not yet any system in place to make sure that when she walks back to her house, she will be protected. On the next episode of 18 Degrees North. It was a night when all was still. That pastry passions experienced a thrill. It could have been the beautiful cakes that made this special little doll awake. A night to indulge in freshly baked products and desserts was enough to make this doll smirk. Now I see why even she couldn't resist taking a bite from the goodies on the pastry passions list. Pastry passions is everybody's passion. So this is where we bring 18 Degrees North to a close for this week. From all of us here at 18 Degrees North and our global team of reporters, I'm Zara Burton. Thanks for watching. See you next time.